hello hello friends I did just want to hop on before the vlog portion of this video to say that this was filmed before a lot of the recommendations about social distancing and not being around large groups of people came out this was before the libraries closed and the schools in our area and a lot of the shops and some of the more mandated things so I did just want to throw that out there and let you know please follow CDC recommendations um, they're suggesting that as much as you can social distance self isolate to wash your hands to keep hand sanitizer to not go out if you're feeling ill at all obviously we should never be doing that if we're ill we should be staying in our house but um, yes I did just want to say that I'm putting the CDC recommendations down below for how you can impact your your communities in a positive way and yes i'm still going to share this video because it was scheduled content but i did want to throw that out there please be safe please follow recommendations of the state to keep yourself and others safe all right on to the vlog hello hello friends welcome to my car how are you doing today my name is mary this is happily ever esh and today we are doing a little book sale haul vlog how fun, I'm very excited. This is one of the biggest book sales in the area that I live in and I'm just pretty stoked. I always find way too many books. I've given myself a number limit, 12, but <laughs> I told my husband I'm giving myself an error margin of three. So 12 is the goal, but like if I just cannot help myself because the selections are just so good, I can go up to 15, but 12 is like, the goal and he, my husband's like so you're just gonna get 15 books I said no <laughs> but maybe so I'm very excited to go and peruse and dig it's going to be a lot of fun and yeah I'm gonna take you along with me so we're going on a little trip to get some delicious new to me but used books let's go all right, friends, we have arrived still in the same car, but with Chick-fil-A at this time. <laughs> um, I just remembered, or I guess I was just thinking about, um, I had went last year with um, baby Judah when he was a baby baby, like a month and a half old. It was like our first big outing and he slept the whole time and I was so happy that I didn't have to nurse him in public. <laughs> <laughs> I might put in a clip here. I had recorded it to like do a vlog that I never posted to the internet. But I'm going to finish my chicken nuggets and I'm going to go browse some books. Alright friends, we made it about an hour. I got 15 items, but see this is why I gave myself a margin of error because two of them I don't consider to be books. They were things I want for the artwork and I'm not going to read them so I'm not putting that on my TBR shelf. And um, another book I will be switching out. So I have a large print paperback and I got a beautiful heart edition so I'm just gonna do a one-two switcheroo so only 12 new books to my shelf see the margin of error my husband's not gonna agree but I knew I did it for a reason I will show you them all when I get home I'll I'll show you the little bags here in just a second one ugh, two two bags all right it's the haul time I am so excited about all these books great little stack here. I'm going to start with the newer releases. I found some great ones. The first one being Home Fire by Kamala Samsi. This one gets all the praise, all the hype. The cover is just to die for. I honestly, I don't know a lot about this book, but it was a dollar. It gets lots of praise and I'm excited to try it. It's also not that long. So it was uh, 100 Notable Books, New York Times book review in 2017. So, yes, I'm very, 
I'm very much looking forward to this one. Another 2017 release is My Absolute Darling by Gabrielle Talent. I think this cover is one of the most beautiful things that I have seen. I just love the trees. This, I believe, deals with a girl who has been heavily abused by her father. I think it has a lot to do with nature, her relationship with nature, but also this relationship that she has built with um, another young person that she meets. I know that it seems to be very hard hitting and hard to read at times. I know that's definitely been a criticism of it, um, but I know Doris from Aldi Books absolutely loves this one. I believe it was on one of her best reads a couple years ago, and ever since I heard her gush about it, I knew I wanted to pick it up, so when I found it for a dollar, I just couldn't resist. So that one was absolutely coming home with me when I found it there. Another 2017 release. Maybe it's been enough years that people have decided they're just not going to read the new books that they bought and they donate it to the book sale. I don't know. Um, but that's Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. This doesn't follow a typical narrative structure. George Saunders is definitely praised for kind of the unique way he tells the story. We are following President Lincoln who goes to his um, dead son's grave, I believe, and then also just the aftermath of the Civil War. I think we're just kind of, we're hearing a lot from the other dead people in the cemetery and it just sounds interesting. That's all I can say, it sounds interesting. It gets a lot of love from people. I know that the audiobook is like a full cast of narrators and there's tons of characters in this. So I might try to pick that up, I don't know. But again, a lovely cover. The typography, man, 2017 killed it with their covers. So excited about that. Again, a dollar, can't beat that. 2016 is the next published date. Um, and we have Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Thien. This was shortlisted for the man Booker Prize. I believe we're dealing with immigration in this. We're dealing with um, the cultural revolution. No, it is said to be quite dense. Um, so we will see about that one, but it's one that's been on my to read list for a very long time. So when I saw it there for a dollar, I couldn't help myself. Again, what a lovely cover this is. So. Yes, one that I've been definitely wanting to read for quite a while. One that I knew I wanted a physical copy because I figured I'd want to mark it up and take my time with it. So was very happy to snatch this one up. If you saw the vlog portions before, you will know that I had kind of a, a cheat book. <laughs> and that's A Gentleman in Moscow by Amar Tolls. I own a paperback large print edition of that. Um, would prefer not to read from the large print edition. So I found this gym and I will be donating my um, paperback copy. I love this cover and I think that I'm going to love this book. I've read Rules of Civility by Amor Tolls. Um, very atmospheric and enveloping and just richly written. So I'm very excited about this one and it gets a lot of praise. I did start it on audio and was enjoying it but just decided audio was not the format I wanted to consume this book in. So I'm excited. I do think it's one that I want to read in the colder months so I don't know if I'll get to it for a while but one I would love to read sooner rather than later but isn't that what we say about all the books yes yes it is not so new release but one i was very excited to find is benediction by kent haruf this is the third book in the plain song trilogy i read plain song at the end of 2019 and adored it and knew i wanted to read um eventide and benediction so i will need to find eventide before i get to this one but I'm nonetheless excited to own it. I will try to take the library stuff off of it, um, but I think another lovely hardback book. Plain Song, we're following a small town in Colorado and those who inhabit it and how their lives affect one another. It was beautiful and lovely and slow paced and magical. And I definitely, for the right reader, would recommend it. All right, for a classic, an old book, if you will. Um, I picked up a Daphne du Maurier, The House on the Strand. I don't know a lot about this. I've never read any Daphne du Maurier, but I think she's going to be an author that I love. So when I find her at used book sales, I typically pick her up. 
what can I say? There she is on the back. Um, I, I also just loved this old edition and yeah, this one seems to have a little more of like a sci-fi psychedelic aspect to it. So I'm interested in that. Um, and again, Du Maurier is just an author that I think I'm going to love. So we'll see if I'm right. My lone nonfiction. I did pick up two cookbooks. Again, books that I'm not counting. Um, I'll put in some clips of them because I don't have them with me and I'm too lazy to get up and get them right now. Um, but this was in the cookbook section and I was very intrigued. And that's The American Plate, A Culinary History in 100 Bites by Libby O. H. O'Connell. I think micro histories are awesome if they're done well and I'm hoping that this one is done well because food is something that I'm definitely very interested in. There's lots of fun pictures and the formatting of this book seemed really fun so I'm really hoping that I like this one. The ratings on Goodreads aren't the best but there's also not a ton of ratings so sometimes that can kind of skew a little bit if you have less people rating it so yes this is one that I was happy to stumble upon and stick in my cart for a dollar. Moving on to some YA and middle grade another book that I don't know anything about is Before We Were Free by Julia Alvarez. She wrote In the Time of Butterflies and some other books. This is a little short guy. The Pura Bel Prix Award is given to um, Latina Latino um, authors, illustrators, books that best represent and celebrate um, the Latina Latino culture. We're following a young girl who does immigrate to the United States um, based on persecution in the country. So yes, a short little guy, one that I'm very excited to read, not heard anything about, so was excited to find a surprise book. That's always nice. All right, two middle grade, one that I've already read. So again, doesn't really count. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really count. Um, Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. I read this book as a child and loved it, read it as an adult and quite enjoyed it again. And just one that I want to keep on my shelves. We're following Salamanca, who is kind of going on a road trip adventure with her grandparents and she's telling a story throughout it. And it's just lovely and it's, um, yeah, just a great book. There's a really strong mystery aspect in it as well. And I remember being shook as a child, like just shocked um, when the ending came. So um, I think it'd be a great one to read with, with little ones. And one that I'm pretty sure I have on my unread shelf in my like home that I grew up in, um, but found it and couldn't resist is um, Esperanza Rising by Pam Mun. Munez Ryan, again, the Pura Belpre Award um, winner. I don't know much about this. I believe it has to do with a young girl immigrating from Mexico. She um, came from a very wealthy and privileged family in Mexico, and I think it's just kind of her experience with immigration. Um, very excited, and I've heard lots of people rave about this one this middle grade March, and I was excited to find it and maybe squeeze it in this month. We'll see. All right, and then some mysteries because I couldn't help but peruse the mystery section. The first is The Crow Trap by Anne Cleves. This is the Vera Stanhope mystery series. I had been perusing Book Outlet and just looking at all the different mystery series they had and this was one that really trapped my eye, trapped, <laughs> caught my eye. Um, and I was excited to find it for 50 cents. I really like this edition. The purple is really pretty. And I know that there's multiple in the series. If I end up enjoying this one, there's also a TV series. So that's really fun. One that I just could not believe my luck. I found the next Maisie Dobbs, um, the next in the Maisie Dobbs mystery series that I need. And that's The Messenger of Truth by Jacqueline Winsphere in this gorgeous, hard cover. I was so excited. This is a historical um, mystery series set in England and we're following Maisie Dobbs who was a nurse in World War One, and she's now an investigator and she, a lot of the um, cases that she takes on has to do with the war um, and veterans and people who are affected by the war. So I absolutely adore this series. Wanted to pick this one up sooner rather than later and so was it static to find it for a dollar at this library book sale. I almost passed it up because I was like, oh, I think that's one that was later in the series. And then I was like, no, it's not. So 
very excited. And then last but certainly not least, a little bit of a literary thriller. I might put it in like a tangerine category. Um, yes, literary mystery maybe. And that is Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller. Um, the Times says, a latter day Daphne du Maurier de Maurier, a compulsive page turner. So yes, please don't know a lot about this. Don't want to know a lot about it. I, you know, it's a mystery. So I just have heard great things about this book and about Claire Fuller as an author. I have her book, Our Endless Numbered Days, that I really need to get to. This seems a little different. So we'll see. This kind of, it calls my name a little, it's a little more in my comfort zone than the other one. So we'll see if I, which one I get to first. But a cute little 50 cent paperback, I took it. All right, friends, those are all the books that I bought on my little book sale. I hope you enjoyed the vlog and yeah, it's not something that in the next couple weeks or months I will probably be doing. And so yes, I hope you enjoyed what I was able to share with you today. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.